we'll, we'll call that good um, for, the, for the audio. Um, so let's, let's explore some of these ideas. Um, what, uh, what is, as you review your notes from last Thursday and as you listen to this, was there anything in there that really kind of mm, struck a chord with you as far as, you know, something that like, wow, or, you know, I don't buy that or whatever? The first thing that you said today is our responses will change the things that happen to us. And I've noticed that in my own life. It's incredible. Can you give an example? It's, it's just the way that you choose to react to things really affects what you begin to see in your life. Mm -hmm. and you stop <coughs> noticing the things that bother you and you start noticing the things that you really like. You see more and more and more. It propagates and grows on its own. I can't give a specific example. Can anyone? I mean, I, I, I agree. What, what? I think what we can do with style. You can notice this act. I don't like that style. You notice it more. Mm. Kind, of the thing. kind of like when you buy a blue car and all of a sudden everybody else has a blue car. Yeah. Everyone's driving the same Maserati that you're driving. <laughs> sure. um, one of the things that I shoot to live for or shoot to live by is loving everybody because as soon as you start to hate something or someone, they get all of your power and they get all of mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Like the rattlesnake, for instance. Mm -hmm. If anything bit him, he has every right to hate that guy. But mm -hmm. as soon as you do, as soon as you go chase after him, it's going to make matter worse. So you suck out the poison, get over it, and start moving on. Good. Good. It's amazing how, uh, and we play with this a lot more in the other class than we do in this one, but the, uh, the idea that you become what you think about all the time and you attract what you think about all the time. That you actually, mm, that which you're thinking about becomes your reality. That is what is our reality. And so if you're constantly thinking about how much you want to get back at somebody for doing something, that's your reality because all you have are your thoughts. That's all you are is continuous mm, thinking and then acting on that thought um, subsequently. So I really like how you said um, memory and imagination is like the best thing to like exercise because mm -hmm. it's your best freedom against anything. It's like using your imagination, like you can turn anything into a good situation. Mm -hmm. You yes. Kind of make it up, and mm -hmm. it's a good way. I don't know. No, you're exactly right. And, and as we get into today's stuff, we're going to explore how we can develop this muscle of choosing how to respond. Because what did he say? People, everyone responds to things, right? Everyone, we are constantly responding to the things that are happening in our environment or to the things that we're thinking about. We're constantly responding. He said, reactive people respond on the basis of what? Did you catch this? Emotions. And what did you say? Yeah, they, they like, oh, it's rainy. It's, this is the one that kills me. And we all do this, but oh, it's Monday. I guess I should be bummed today. Or it's <laughs> Friday <laughs> and I guess it's a good day today. <laughs> really, this is, a, this is a statistic that just, when I heard it, I just couldn't believe it. But if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Going back to our um, discussion on stress, I, I don't know if we mentioned this, more people die. Did, any, did we talk about when more people? More people die on what day of the week would you guess, based on what we talked about with the effects of stress? Monday. Monday. More people die at 9 o'clock on Monday morning than any other time of the week. What's happening at 9 o'clock on Monday morning? Most people are going to work and most people hate their jobs. And because of that, they have a perception that is, or they have, they are making a response based on their emotions about it. Another thing that, that's interesting, what day of the year are there more deaths 
than any other day of the year. Close. Last day of December. It's the day after Christmas. Now, when you say, yeah, why, would, why are you nodding your head yes? I can't imagine what it would be like because I didn't have my family. I mm -hmm. feel like the next day like everybody is like just seeing all of everything, like the people together and like dinner. All and then all of cool a sudden, the next day you're just like, I don't know. I think I'd right. Be There's one interpretation that they're making. What's another interpreta interpretation that people make on the day after Christmas? Good. Good. So you've been through all that, and now you realize why you hate your family so much. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, Corey? Okay. Could be that. And you realize that you've got a credit card bill that is you got to take care of now. I mean, all of these things are interpretations. In other words, we're responding on the basis of emotions and circumstances. He said the proactive person responds on the basis of what? Values. Decisions that they have made about things. And that's what I want to explore today. One final comment that, that Covey said, and I think it's possibly one of the most enlightened aphorisms, one of the most enlightened Lighten statements I've ever heard. He said, if you think the problem is outside of you, that thought is the problem. Tune into that. If you think the problem is outside of you, that thought is the problem. Now, why does that make sense now to us? Because you immediately just like release control. You don't have any control anymore once you decide that. You're yeah. just prone to the circumstance. Right. So that's a problem. Right. You can't react to it. You have relegated your power to the circumstance as opposed to your decision about the circumstance. And let that circumstance control how you decide to think and ultimately feel. Corey? I've heard this. If you think that your problem is because of everybody outside of you, then everyone else will have to go to better for you to feel better and that's a no-win situation no matter what right yeah. there's no way you can win if you need everyone else to change in order for you to feel better there's no possible way you'll win and that's not how life's set up but we're not enlightened to get to the, we're not we haven't figured that out until now we're figuring that out and going wow I can I don't have to be upset about my neighbor and how she's not doing what I think she should be doing. I can let her be that way. Oh, I didn't know I could. Isn't that just an example of local control? Entirely. Yes. Entirely. In locus of people who are internally driven, who have an internal locus of control, decide for themselves how they want to feel, irregardless of the circumstances. So. Like he said at the beginning, proactive people carry their own weather. It doesn't make any difference that it's raining or sunny, you know. You're not going to be, and I know this is, this is tough for us because we've been conditioned to every, every year we get depressed in January, right? I'm not getting enough sun. Or it's January, or I just know that something's making me depressed. We've been conditioned that when somebody swears at you, I, this happened to me. Um, I was driving my car. I have this. I have this old Jeep. I had this old Jeep that's like a one of those boxes. It it it's a what? I didn't hear what she said. Um, no, it's just a Cherokee Sport. It was a really old Jeep, and I was driving along. Washington Boulevard up there by um, uh, it's five points. I don't know if it's yeah, and and I was just driving along and it was I was on my way to school. It was a nice day and I had my windows open 
and I was just driving along and everyone's, you can't go very fast there because everyone's in the same speed. And this guy, really, he drove up next to me and, and I looked over and he rolled down his window and he looked at me and, and forgive me, I'm not one who swears, but this is what he said and I'm just quoting him. Quoting him. He looked up at me and he went, <laughs> and I, and I'm driving, I went, how do you know? <laughs> you know? He doesn't know me well enough, I might be, but I can't, he, he can't judge whether I am or not. Now, we're conditioned when somebody, and I thought about this afterwards, if 20 years ago somebody had said that to me, I'd have gone, well, I'll show you. My <laughs> Cherokee's twice as big as yours. Bam! Or I'd get right up on his, t you know how people drive when they're really ticked off at somebody, they go like this far, six inches away from their bumper. I'll show you how mad I am, you know? But I thought, I don't need to get, get upset about what this guy's having a bad day. And whatever I did, I don't know. I don't, can't imagine what I could have done different than anyone else in that little section that made him want to unload on me. But I was thinking, you know, my thought was, I, I decided to be, um, to respond from my own values and my own decisions and, and my own values say, People can't help it. It's their own fault that they have these problems. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But that's the decision I've made about it. When somebody's upset about something, it has nothing to do with me. I've decided that. Which is maybe just as inaccurate as he's upset at me and, you know, that I should get upset that he's upset at me. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't need to be... Mm, I don't, I can't let that guy, like Corey's saying, I can't let that guy m make me feel how I should feel. So ultimately, we've said, um, like Eleanor Roosevelt, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent, or make you feel like a fool without your consent. Well, my thinking is, no one can make you anything without your consent. So when you say to somebody, man, you're making me so bored or so angry or so whatever, jealous, well, that's a lie. And we can't, if we want to be in control of our thoughts and feelings and attitudes, then we have to accept responsibility for every one of those emotions that we have and we cannot say he's doing it to me. That's the essence of what I think Covey's trying to tell us. So it's no longer I can't possibly make you bored. <laughs> Isn't that great? So if a teacher's making you bored, I should let's change that now to say the teacher is saying what she's saying, or he's saying, and how do you finish that if that's how you're feeling? Okay, so that's something that I am choosing to be uninterested about. I am thinking boring thoughts. He can't make you bored, or angry, or upset, or anxious, or anything without you deciding to have that be the case for you. And his, his focus, his, remember his comment that he made from Viktor Frankl's book? The last ultimate freedom. Did anyone catch that? It's on your quiz, I promise, so I suggest you get this down. The what? The power to choose. The power to choose what? Yes, nope. The power to choose one's own response or reaction to any given set of circumstances. The power to choose one's own response to any given set of circumstances. 
That was Viktor Frankl who, worst circumstances a human being's ever been in and lived through. That's a great book if you want to read a good book. Okay. All right. Well, if we have that power, if we have that ability, what, what did we say is in here? What is, what did he separate? He separated stimulus response and he said between that is our power to choose. Our ability to choose. Our ability to choose our response. Our greatest human freedom. Well, if that's the case, then some of us, this is a new muscle. And so I'm going to teach, I'm going to give it, we're going to do some barbell lifting um, with this muscle. Nothing too heavy yet. And explore how we can do this. And this is getting into chapter, I think, five of your book. This is something that I created. Sorry about that. This is something I created um, a few years ago. And so far, and if you have any other um, things to add to this, this is, this is kind of mm, evolving, but it's still, as far as in the years that I've been teaching, it, it still works. It still fits. It still seems to be um, an accurate way of, of when, when Covey says our ability to choose our own response, then the, que the next question is, well, how can I respond to things? And pretty much I've been watching, I'm, a huge in, I'm hugely interested in human behavior. I h love watching people and how they are in situations. And so I, I've been kind of keeping an eye on this, just to watch how people respond to situations, whether consciously or unconsciously. And it seems that to me, that so far I can find seven or eight ways that we can kind of categorize different ways that people respond. So I want to walk you through this and we'll use examples so that it, this will be perfectly clear how it is that we can respond more proactively. Um, so you'll notice there are several columns. The first column says degree of inner peace. And you'll notice towards the top there's more peace. And that's, that's the main thing that I'm interested in is how peaceful am I in this situation and can I get myself, remember what did we say precedes every emotion? A thought. We always have a thought before every emotion. If that's the case and we want to feel good, and in my case, my, I love feeling peaceful. Even when I'm playing full court basketball, I still want to feel peaceful in it. And I find I play basketball better when I am peaceful. And so we have to ask ourselves, how do I get myself to that emotion or joy or happiness or whatever emotions are our favorites. It still, it still works here. Um, the next column says usefulness. In other words, how effective is it towards either relaxation or stress? The next column is, you have to turn it to the side, is where we see things when we have situations in our envi environment and we see them as they are or below the line how we think they should be. Big difference. How they are or how we think they should be. The next one, this is, this is the part that is the, how our thinking is happening. 
So when we'll go through each one of those, that next line sounds like, in other words, what are we saying to ourselves for each of those ways that we respond? People typically say certain things when they are, when something's happening. And we'll make that really clear. And then the resulting feeling, that's what we're after or what we want to avoid, those things that are below that more bold line or above it. Those kind of are the feel good or don't feel so good kinds of results based on that thinking. If every emotion pre is preceded by a thought, we get in touch with our thoughts, we have solved the problem of, of bad emotions. Absolutely. Okay? And I'm not saying as we do this, we should never feel sad or angry or anything like that. What I am saying is, all of these emotions are driven by us. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to have the whole list of emotions. But you're doing it to yourself, and if you want to change it, you can do that too. That's, that's the good news of all this. So, let, let's um, use some examples. Um, has anyone had anything recently where they found themselves, and we'll, we'll go back to the, the way everyone else says it, you got angry or you got upset or you got s really stressed about as a result of that instance that I took place? A, a assistant store director at work, and it seems like he always has a complaint against me. Like if something goes wrong, he's like, you know, like he always has a me about it, though I wasn't the one responsible for the activity that should have been done. So you, and you ultimately feel? I feel like I'm singled out, and like it really stresses me out, because I walk okay. into work, and I know he's there, I'm like, okay, what is he going to complain about today, what did I do that I didn't really was supposed to do, or what am I going to get blamed for? Okay, good example. Who else? Does anyone else have any, Bob? Um, I really recently just got engaged. And, uh, Man, that <laughs> doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> and um, my parents were 100% supportive, and that was really stressful. So how, like, 12% supportive or 90% or? <laughs> <laughs> They're like 10, like, probably 25% like not for it. That makes sense. They're happy for me, but they are like, maybe you okay. should wave or something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, does anyone else have any instance that Mike? So I walked into class today and we started passing around this paper and <laughs> you said to write your book name on it. And for about three to four seconds, I was stressing because I didn't have a book. <laughs> okay, that'll work. That'll work well. Let me think if I have, um, <laughs> okay, this happened to me, and it's a little more serious than, than some of those, um, at least in my interpretation. Um, one day I was playing basketball, and I, uh, um, I, I, it was just at a church, and I was just playing with a bunch of guys, and I, I shot the ball, and as I, I noticed I was going to miss, and so I pushed off to get the rebound, and it felt like somebody took a bat and just went BAM in the back of my calf and my Achilles had ruptured and I couldn't lift my foot up it, it was stuck there I couldn't go like this I couldn't bring my toe up that was bad <laughs> so I'm gonna use that one just to demonstrate the this is, this is kind of a, mm, I'll use another that's kind of in that um, level of maybe seriousness and even more so is, um, oh man, I forgot what the name, what's the name of it when you have a child and then it's stillborn, it's not stillborn but it died. Miscarriage, miscarriage. yeah, you have a miscarriage. Um, 
Has anyone else got anything? Um, my husband was stepping on a trampoline and tore a big deal. He's a mechanic, so he's kind of. Torn ACL. Maybe we'll use that instead of that one. Um, but the last one I want to use, I have a daughter. Um, you don't say anything about this to anyone. You might know her. Oh, okay. um, I have a daughter who, and it's not the one you think, um, who she has no idea what it means to clean something. She has, she has the idea of a, uh, we made a, a room, we have, we have a basement where we, we deliberately made a room for her and a bathroom for her, and there's a little family room there. And really, I walk down into her room, and I can't see the floor. I can't see the dresser. There's, you barely can tell there's a bed in there. For, <laughs> and then there's a line of stuff, and then her bathroom is similarly a mess. Okay? And here she is in my, and I kind of, I'm not, like a clean freak by any stretch, I kind of like a clean place, okay? So that's the, that's the situation um, that is before me in this instance. So daughter's messiness. Okay, now, what I would like to do with this, as we look at this chart that's before you, What I would like us to each tune into, because we, uh, really, this is, um, I could have put the guy swears at me. And it, it's still the same thing. See, this applies to every instance in which we are conscious. It can apply. And it, it actually, I say, it is always being applied we just do it either consciously or not consciously. We either use our muscle to go toward these feelings that we'd prefer, or we forget and then we wonder why we're so ticked off or stressed or whatever, okay? And it's really that universally applicable, okay? We just are using some situations that came to mind. So, what I want us to do is to ask ourselves, kind of focusing on this sounds like what we would say to ourselves column, and ask ourselves, okay, this, this lowest part and these, these three that are below the line aren't necessarily in any order of quality or value. They just happen to be below the line and I can't stick them all on the same line. But they all have the same ultimate outcome of turning on the stress response, turning on the protective response, um, and resulting in feelings that aren't, that we would call unpleasant, okay? So when we are in this, let, let's start with attachment or rightness. When we're in this mode, when something happens and we have the opportunity to respond, what does this sound like in our head? If Here's what, what is suddenly happening for us. So, for example, um, if, who was it had the torn ACL husband? Was it your husband? Yeah. Um, so, if he's in that instance and he's in about being right or attached to um, what's going on, he would say something like, um, this shouldn't have happened this way. Okay, when I have this torn Achilles, man, I was in good shape. I, I stretched out before the game. That shouldn't have happened. Um, complainer, coworker, you know, he he needs to be more friendly to me. Okay, guy swears at me. Well, he doesn't have any right to. He doesn't have any right to say that to me. He doesn't know about me. Okay? Disappoint, disapproving parents. They should be more approving of what I'm wanting to do. OK? 
Okay? Can you hear what? This is what we're saying to ourselves in the instant of the event. What's he doing giving us assignment like that? Shouldn't happen. <laughs> right? That's what he's saying to himself. Um, how could I possibly have had a miscarriage? There's, now, what is the problem? You should be more clean in my house. You're in my house. You should be clean. You should take care of things. Now, what's the problem with that thought? What's the immediate problem that you can see with that thought that you're having? Okay, that the resulting feeling is one of not so happy, but what's an even previous to that? Because that is true. Okay, so you're releasing responsibility for the emotion you're feeling. The fact that he's a complainer, the, guy, the fact that this guy swears at me. What's the problem with responding that he shouldn't have done that? that you can't control it. Like, you can't control what's happening to you. You yeah. can't control how you respond, right? So, like, that's the thing. That's the problem, like, with your thinking, at least for me, is that you're trying to control what you can't. You, exactly. You're trying to control something that you cannot control. The fact that he swore at me and the idea that I think he shouldn't have sworn at me, he already did. And I can't undo what he's done. I can't undo the fact that there's a mess. I can't, and I liked what you said. I remember I went to this, this conference and this lady said this, and it took me a second to realize what, she said, we have to stop shooting all over ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> You're exactly right with that. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we, we keep saying over and over, things should be this way. You should act that way. My, my Achilles should not have torn. The problem with that thought is, it did. Does that make sense? And all the while that we are resisting that from happening does not change the fact that it happened. You getting that? We, we go there, we're trained to go there. Oh my gosh, that shouldn't have happened. And we should really, oh, how awful. And we find that the emotions we get are ultimately down here in that little box. We get angry, we get disappointed. Mr. And I'm not saying, okay, I'm never going to get angry or disappointed. But realize you're doing it. And if you're doing it, you can also change. Okay, so that's the, that's the first one. Does that make sense? So whatever we're thinking, we are saying this shouldn't be this way. We're attached to how we think it ought to be. It ought to be different. It isn't. You're exactly right. We don't have control over virtually almost everything that goes on around us. Okay, so the next level up, this is what the guy did who showed up next to me in, in the car. Instead of him, he, he decided to throw out a judgment at me. Well, I'll show you who, what you really are. Man. So, so let's see how this sounds. Um, torn ACL. When we're making a judgment about it, What, what might that sound like in our heads? When, when we're talking in, in our heads about the torn ACL or the torn Achilles and we're making a judgment about it, what does that sound like? Hang in here with me. What? Good. I'm such a jerk. What was I thinking? Okay, the guy, um, the co complainer, co-worker. 
So what do you find yourself saying about this guy to others when you, oh, let me tell you what, what a, and fill in the blank of what you call him, right? That's where we turn to. Guy swears at me. Well, let me tell you what kind of person you are. You disapproving parents. Man, they're mindless. They haven't got a clue what I'm about here. Um, set an assignment. What a stupid professor for doing that. He should do that. You know, we, we waver between those bottom two. Uh, I guess I'm not worthy of having this child. We make up stuff. My daughter, you know, what am I saying to myself when I go into her room? What, what, am I, what thought am I having that is judgmental or that is, you know, blaming or criticizing that results in, or that when I see the room. Okay, but that's, that's the judgment call. That's the, what am I saying? You could be saying like, if the hamster ever got out, we never get it back. <laughs> <laughs> she bought hamsters recently too. <laughs> You don't know. It's the you don't know her either. So it's the it's the one that you're not best friends with either. Um, yeah. What a, what a slob. What a slob. How are these hamsters? I mean, <laughs> you know, you make judgments about people all the time. What's the immediate problem with making a judgment about somebody? What's the immediate? They're never accurate. You can't possibly be accurate. I mean, think about this, and I'm not trying to be all moral or anything, but from a very practical standpoint, how many life experiences have each of you had? From the moment you're born, and even before that, a lot of what you do is a result of what happened while you were in the womb, and then afterwards, and all of those life experiences and to say that I can tell what kind of a person you are based on my limited understanding of where you've come from, there's no way we can be accurate. There's no possible way we can be accurate. Slob, how do you know? How do you know? There's no way you can tell. I was just going to say, like, when we're looking at the like, ways that you bump events and you respond to comparing, I think comparing can be one of the absolute Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you think about it and you're like, well, they didn't t tear their ACL. They must have been in better shape yep. than I am. And so yep. then it makes you go into this, oh, that shouldn't have happened because I should have done this. And I just, I don't know. Like, exactly. To me, it sounds like it can be like applicable to all of those situations, but some of the worst because you don't know the other people's situations. You don't know what they've experienced to get to where they're at. And so if you compare yourself to that, then you're just like digging yourself into like Exactly. Into exactly. Exactly. Perfect. How do you deal with that when it comes to family jobs? Because they're always being compared. Like they always have a set standard, but jobs will always say you need to be more like this person. Well, I think that's a difference when you're setting up a, a standard for something to which you need to, um, like as, a, as an instructor, we have certain standards. As a professor, we have standards. You know, that's a different thing than you slob, you jerk, you idiot, you... Why aren't you more like your sister? Or why aren't you more like your brother? Look how obedient he is. Yeah. He keeps his room and why can't you? And that thought like that creates resentment too. Yeah. And so the, the, the anecdote of that is above the line. We'll, we'll explore those in just a second. Um, let's see. I forgot what I was just going to say. What? You said, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Um, the other thing that I have noticed about comparing, which I think is fascinating, if you observe people who, who have a tendency to put people down, oh, she's such an idiot. Their, their attempt is try to, to try to boost themselves up to be superior somehow than the other person by putting that other person down, right? I'm so superior because I can, I can make her, you know, I can put her in a category that is far below me. 
Now, what's the lie about that? See, I'm convinced ain't nobody any better than anybody else and nor does anyone have the power to be better than anybody else. It's not humanly possible to be a better human being. Now, we might do different things and we might have vastly different outcomes, but as far as being human, we are all on exactly the same level. And so it's a lie to put somebody down. And I actually think it's interesting that the people who have the highest self-esteem, the people who feel the most comfortable with themselves, they actually try to lift other people up. They say that you don't see them trying to put, artificially put somebody else down. I see that over and over again. The people who are most self-confident, they don't, they're, they're good. They don't try to push them. They're like, wow, you should see how, what a great job this guy is doing. Does that make sense? The whole idea of judging and comparing is a lie. We do it nonstop. But I think it's an ineffective way and the resulting feelings, an ineffective way of responding to things and the resulting feelings are not ones that we like to have that, that lead toward you know, peacefulness and happiness and those kinds of things. The other one that's below the line um, is, is, I termed it resistance. And this is where we say to ourselves, and it sounds kind of like should, but it's a little bit different when we say, I wish, it would, I wish, wish this weren't happening this way. I wish I wouldn't have had that torn ACL. I wish I wouldn't have torn my Achilles. I wish this, mm, this guy would be nicer. I wish that guy wouldn't have, no, that guy, I wish he wouldn't have done that to me. Now, what's the problem with that thought? What's the immediate problem with that thought? He did. Yeah. And all the wishing I would like to have happen is not going to undo the fact that he did what he did. And here I am. Sudden assignment. Man, I wish he wouldn't have given that to us. Well, he did. And all the wanting it to be different is not going to change the fact that this is how things are. I find it fascinating how, how, you know, you hear of these terrible, and I'm not speaking lightly of them, but you hear terrible mm, environmental, you know, like tsunamis and... Um, or hurricanes and tornadoes and all of these earthquakes and all these things that happen. And certainly those are painful during them. And there's going to be tough times repairing everything. But to stay in that, man, I wish this flood would never have happened. Oh, I wish only it could have been different. If only I would have done something. And we just stay in those Mm, martyr, you know, this, this poor me, instead of doing something useful about it. I wish my daughter would take care of things. She's got two arms, she's got a brain, she can do something about it, and then I just You've heard of people, I have this neighbor who just, I'm sure every night she just, um, she just thinks to herself, oh man, I wish that neighbor was nicer to me and I wish that, and she, she, to, she actually told me this, she gets virtually no sleep at all because she sits down here in these three levels thinking about, man, I wish those guys were different and those guys are really idiots and these guys, all night long. So you can see, and I think boredom, I, I put in there boredom. How do you tell? Mm. There's a way to tell if you're resisting what is happening. If you're resisting the way things are, in other words, when you're saying, resisting meaning, I wish things were different. There's two or three ways to tell if 
you are resisting. One is if time slows down for you. When time is going much slower for you, in other words, I, I had this instance, this um, situation where my family and I went to Hawaii a few years ago and on the way back, and I'm not trying to be mean, this is just what happened, but there were, I was in the middle, we had to split up our seats because we got cheap flights at the last second, they just put us wherever. And so I sat between two really immense ladies. <laughs> <laughs> they were, and they loved talking to each other about stuff I didn't care about. <laughs> I wanted to read, I wanted to sleep, and all I heard, all, and, and both of them, they were, they were really large. And <laughs> their arms were on the rests, you know, you, those rests, are, you have to share them. And I, I was like this, from Hawaii to California, that flight took at least 18 hours. <laughs> it was the longest oh, flight oh, oh, oh. of all time. Because the whole time I kept saying, I wish things were different than they are. Time slows down when we resist something. When we find ourselves bored, we are resisting what is happening. That's another way to tell. Um, and if we find ourselves suddenly getting tired, you ever watched a video or watched some movie with somebody and they want you to watch it and you're just, oh, I'd rather be watching football or something. And you just are falling asleep, you're just kind of getting tired. That's another indication that you're resisting what's happening, okay? It's really, really a fascinating thing to watch. If ever you feel mm, less than calm, happy, peaceful feelings, tune into your thoughts about what's happening and that'll indicate why you're having them. Okay? Now, we go above the line, the solution, or as, as at least, in my opinion, ways to stay out of the stress response, ways to stay peaceful, ways to stay happy. And the first level, and it'll sound kind of weird because it doesn't seem like anything, like you're doing anything. But the first level, um, I call observation. I just got a tongue stuck out at me. So I'm going to be on the first level. She walked by and stuck out her tongue at me. Um, I'm going to be at the first level where I'm saying, in, in this level we say, because some of us, we may not know how to, hand, to think differently than we are trained to think, which is entirely below this line. I wish it were different. I, this should be a lot. This, this, idiots. Um, we, we train ourselves to think that way. So it's kind of difficult to go above that line. We're not used to it. And so I think this first one is, is a piece of cake. And all we do in those instances, we say to ourselves, hmm, I'm noticing that. And then you let your senses tell you what it is that you're noticing. Now this will sound weird like, that doesn't sound like a, but I want you to watch the outcome. So torn ACL, what could he say in that instant that would be um, in the observation mode. Now I get to spend more time with my family. Okay, no, you're moving up a little bit. Hold on. When you're still, <laughs> you're, you're jumping into more positive things still. But if you're in the observation mode, what would he say? Oh, I'm noticing that. Yeah, that there's a... There's a lot of pain happening down there. Now, that sounds like, well, that's a dumb thing to say. But if he's not, if he's not going below this line, then he's also not going to have any mm, of the bad emotional states as a result of it. It's, wow. Um, coworker, what could you say if you're in the observation mode that would, when he's, unloading or, or 
whatever he's doing. What could you say where you say, I'm noticing that? Um, I always say, I'm like, I notice that a lot of things he's saying, I have no control over. Okay. Or he just keeps on talking. He keeps saying stuff and he's got a lot of energy going. Right? You don't have, it, have to make it be part of you. It's just his problem and he's, you happen to be there while he's unloading it. But on all you have to do is, oh, wow, you're really, you got something going on for yourself, don't you? <laughs> okay. Guy swears at me. If I'm in the observation mode, what do I say? What, what's the thought that I have? Noticing this guy is not very pleased. Yeah. There you go. I'm noticing. Now, if I say that to myself, get this. If I say that in that way to myself, what's the resulting feeling I'm going to have? Empathy. Maybe. What's, the, the more, what's the, an even more likely feeling that I will have when I just go, wow, I notice you're pretty upset about something. Maybe. I mean, that's pushing it a little. I would be more just calm. You know, oh, you're having a big, rough day. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't, and it, you know, and what you were saying earlier, see that, if I respond angrily, How's he likely to continue to respond? He will, and so that's why we have wars and arguments. But if you have, if I just go, wow, that's, that's something for you today. Hmm, I'm noticing you're pretty upset. And then just, you know, it kind of, what, what was his likely response to that? Okay, if it was just entirely, wow, you've got something going on, and I, I just keep driving, he's going to go, well, I can't get this guy. Okay. I guess I'll keep going. It, it shapes how we respond to things shapes subsequent events. Imperceptibly, maybe. But it does do some shaping. If I go down into my daughter's room and she's not there, there's nothing I can do about the fact that she's been messy and I see this room, what is that going to sound like in my head? What am I going to be saying to myself? What? Yeah, there's a lot of clothes here. Well, that's interesting. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Now, if that might think, well, that's a dumb thing. But if I'm thinking that way, what emotion am I not going to have toward her? Is that a good thing? The last thing I, I know for sure, at least with her, the more I resist how messy she is, the messier she gets. The more I just let her have, you know, where, where I stay in this above the line part, one, it doesn't affect me. I'm like, I, it's like, you can't, you can have your messes and I choose to be peaceful. Going up, the, and I'm going to combine two of them, I'm going to put together acceptance and allowance and essentially, essentially on these two you're essentially saying you know, it's okay. That's how you are. That's how things are. Things get a little strange, you know? So, like, you tear your ACL. Okay, that's what happened. Must be some reason why I'm supposed to have a torn Achilles right now. And that's what I had to say, because I was so upset. I was actually in training for, uh, for some races that summer, and all I could think about at first was, man, this is just screwing up all of my training for, for, the, for the runs. And I kept getting angrier and angrier. And finally, I just said, OK, I'm going to go above the line. Must be something else that I'm supposed to do. And it happened to, it turned out that that summer, I wrote a textbook. It was that summer when I wrote most of the book that we're using for this class. 
I had a lot of extra time on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> because I couldn't do a lot of things that I like to do. Okay, guy swears at me. Or either one of these, complain or coworker. What would you say to yourself? What's the, remember, it's your thoughts. What would you say to yourself at this point, or at this level of acceptance or allowance, as he's continually um, being whatever he is, doing whatever he's doing? Just, this is how he is. And yeah, he can't help it. I love saying that to myself. He can't help it. That's just how he is, and he can't help it. I, I don't think that's true, but when I say that to myself, that's like, okay, that's why he does that. He can't help it. Okay? That's just his, that's where he is today. Okay, disapproving parents. I get it, that they don't, they may not like how, I, how I've chosen to spend the rest of my life. And, you know, that's, I'll have to live with that. Instead of resisting, they should, they should approve. No, that's where they are. Um, okay, sudden assignments happen, pop quizzes happen. I'm in school. That's what happens from time to time. I've handled them before, I could probably handle this one. Okay, miscarriage. Wasn't the right time for that kid to be in our family. My daughter's room. She's that way. Maybe someday she'll grow. Do, do people grow out of that messy? I hope. <laughs> do they? My other daughter is just as clean and as, I mean, it's just amazing. I don't know how they grew up in the same family, but <laughs> she's just so opposite. But do you see how I feel when that's how I am? If I'm that way, what's the feelings that I get? I'm, bad. I'm, I'm okay. It's really interesting that, I don't know if any of you remember um, looking at Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Remember what was at the top of that in, the, um, in his triangle of hierarchy of needs? What was at the top? What did you say? Uh-huh. Or self-actualization, right. In other words, people, he went all around the world and he found people who were functioning at their highest psychologically and he said there are a few characteristics that these people have and one of the things that he said was common to those people who were self-actualized is they were accepting of most everything. They just accepted, they got it about what you're saying that you can't do anything about this, it's far wiser to accept it than resist it. Okay, now, I want to just play with these last two really quickly because I think these are, the, these are where we can change it to our greatest benefit, any situation. In the discovery mode, we ask ourselves, what can I learn from this? What is it about this situation that I'm supposed to learn here? You know, in this case with my daughter, I think the thing I'm supposed to learn is patience with myself and with, my, with other people. That's a far better emotion than anger at her. And if I'm with her, get this, if I'm with her and that's how I am, how are we likely to be? If I'm in a, what can I learn from my own need to be patient? patient, how are we likely to be in our relationship? Is it going to be awful or is it going to be great? It's going to be good, huh? See, this works, a t this works like crazy in relationships. Whatever relationship you're in, if you've got problems, a lot, remember, and Covey said, if you think the problem's outside of you, in relationships, that thought's the problem, yeah. Mm. Good. Good. Yeah. 
when we ask ourselves, what can I learn about this situation? It's a far higher way of responding. The highest level, I'm convinced, is that of gratitude. Yeah. When you s understand the, the higher principle of there must be some reason why this is happening and it is for my good and I'm grateful for it, the resulting feeling you get is joy. The resulting feeling you get is serenity. You get peacefulness. When in ev every instance, and you consciously go, I'm so grateful I have a daughter. I'm so grateful I'm in school. I'm in the top 1% of the whole world as far as academics. I get to be in school. I'm so grateful I have 